The relationship between Ubisoft and Nintendo this console generation has been interesting to say the least. During E3 2017, we were introduced to Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, which was a really strange game. Putting Mario and his friends in an XCOM-like strategy game sounds strange on paper, but Ubisoft made it work. Nintendo allowed Ubisoft to use the intellectual properties of Mario and his friends, and they made a really, really solid game. It was one of the highest rated games for the Nintendo Switch in 2017. Fans loved it as well. It sold really well, so it was an all-around success for Nintendo and Ubisoft. And then during E3 2017, we were also introduced to a game called Starlink. Now, Starlink looked pretty interesting. It looked like a No Man's Sky game with some Toys to Life incorporated with it. Well, during E3 2018, it was revealed that the Nintendo Switch version of Starlink would have Star Fox included into it, and that really piqued my interest in the game. Star Fox on the Super Nintendo was a really interesting game. Of course, using the Super FX chip, it allowed for 3D models to be put in polygons on the Super Super Nintendo, and it was just a really unique game. My favorite, though, has to be Star Fox 64. I really feel like that's the pinnacle of the series. It was a beautiful game, it was a fun game, lots of replay value, and it, of course, introduced the Rumble Pack. Now, Star Fox games have been varying degrees of quality over the years. Some have been good, some have been eh, not so good. The last one being Star Fox Zero on the Nintendo Wii U. Now, I liked Star Fox Zero. I thought it was an okay game. I got used to the controls, but I could definitely see why a lot of people did not like that game. So, including Star Fox into Starlink could have been one of two things. It could have just been an easy cash grab, or it could have been a proper incorporation like we saw with Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. So really the question remains, what is Starlink? How much Star Fox stuff is there in Starlink? And did Ubisoft just make one of the best Star Fox games of all time by including Star Fox into Starlink? That's what we're going to figure out today. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's jump into the world of Starlink on the Nintendo Switch with the cool Star Fox stuff. Hey, RGT85, hey Sean. Oh my God, it's Stevie Richards! So the story of Starlink is as follows. Humans can basically now do interstellar travel thanks to an alien space crash that happened on Earth. And a guy named Victor St. Grand basically checks out this alien space crash. He meets an alien who tells him about this new substance that allows for interstellar space travel. So St. Grand and his team are on an expedition, the team being called Starlink, when their ship, the Equinox, is stormed. And St. Grand is captured by a guy named Grax, who wants to use Grand's knowledge of this substance called Nova that he learned from his alien friend that allows for interstellar, interstellar space trips. So Grax and his legion then start striking various planets in the solar system, and St. Grand's team Starlink must stop him, save St. Grand, and of course put an end to all this and put peace into the outer stellar areas. So honestly, the Starlink stuff is okay. You quickly learn about the characters that are on board that are on board the Equinox that are a part of Starlink, and they range from okay-ish, you know, I could tolerate this guy, this guy's kind of cool, to really annoying. There's this one guy who's like a vlogger or something, and he's, he's just very annoying. I, I did not like that character whatsoever. So I was definitely curious to see how Star Fox would be implemented into this, as this game also released on the PS4 and the Xbox One. Would there just be some sort of missions that involve Star Fox, or would it be a full-on integration? Well, you quickly realize that it is a full-on integration, because as this main cutscene is happening, that starts out the game where the ship gets, you know, taken over by Grax and the Legion, you basically get Star Fox, the Star Fox team that comes across this and says, hey, we're going to help you guys out. And then from that point on, the start of the game on, it really becomes evident that this is not just a new IP. This is almost a new Star Fox game. And that absolutely blew my mind. So of course, there's different iterations of the game that you can actually buy. And I picked up the starter pack for the Nintendo Switch, which I believe was $75. Now, what this comes with is basically some different toys because this is a toy to life game at its core. I don't know how well Ubisoft is going to do with that and we'll talk about that a bit later in the video but you get an R-Wing, you get Fox, you get a character from Starlink and then you get some different weapons that you can equip. It also comes with a little dock that you put your Joy-Cons in and that's how you play the game when you're not playing in something like handheld mode or something like that. You can actually switch out the weapons on the fly, you can level up those weapons as well so it's pretty cool but you could definitely see that Ubisoft wants you to purchase more weapons as far 
far as toys are concerned in order to use them because the two weapons that come with the starter kit are the two weapons you can use in the game aside from the laser blaster of course that the R wing has now what's interesting about it is if you pick up the digital version of the game there's an $80 digital version that unlocks everything there's different ships there's different characters and of course different weapons so you might want to you know figure out what sort of thing you want none of these weapons are necessary to actually play and defeat the game everything can be done with just the starter pack so that's pretty cool in my opinion but you might want to sort of wager how much of the tinkering you want to do with different weapons and stuff to see how you're going to purchase the game I quickly realized though that this wasn't just a simple Star Fox inclusion I could actually play as Fox and use the R wing throughout the entire game so once I realized that I realized I didn't want to approach this as a new IP because Starlink itself seems okay the characters themselves you know like I said they range from tolerable to just sort of cringy but Fox and his crew you know Peppy Slippy and of course Falco are all involved in this game so I got really excited at that point and started to treat it like a new Star Fox game more than just a new IP and that's when my enjoyment of the game really started to rise so the gameplay of the game is pretty much like an open world sort of no man's sky thing you go to various planets and you basically just do different missions on these planets there's different missions that are of course exclusive to the Nintendo Switch game as well so you have your main mission which progresses the story you have side missions that basically you use to level up your ship level up your weapons and level up your pilot and then of course you have these uh, wolf missions because wolf is in this atmosphere as well and I really like how they did wolf because it doesn't feel like he was just sort of added in you know at just some point of the game just says you know just to sort of throw him in there to incorporate more Star Fox stuff he's actually woven into the main plot as well along with the side missions so I thought that was really cool it honestly feels like they went into this game maybe with some Star Fox in mind I'm very curious to see you know when Nintendo got involved in this project once you're on these planets there's a ton of different stuff to do you're battling different enemies you're battling um, different sorts of imp hives and things like that you're taking out towers that are part of the Legion and you're basically trying to get the Legion force down in these areas as the game progresses you start to build bases and things like that and it becomes sort of a strategy where you're having to build different bases and keep these planets from getting inhabited by the Legion when you're gone on them so that you can check out other planets there's really cool dog fights in the game as well when you're in outer space when you're going between these planets and like I said there is a high level of customization you can customize your weapons you can customize your ship to get better abilities and of course you can customize Fox himself there's some cool little things in there and I really like how they did nods to previous games and just the text of this stuff there's full voice acting in this game as well with Fox and his crew and of course the Starling crew it's really just very impressive how much this feels like a Star Fox game and that's what I really loved about this game because it really feels like the evolution of Star Fox the Star Fox game we always wanted this sort of crazy open world where there's all these things happening and you're having to help people you're having to blast through enemies and upgrade your ship it just feels very refined it feels very polished and I was really blown away with just how many different sorts of missions there were you could just go through the game and do just the story stuff but I really feel like the side missions are really fun because it not only fleshes out the story of Starlink and Star Fox but it also fleshes out this world that gives you sort of an emotional attachment to people on these planets and wanting to help them and wanting to save them there's also all sorts of different things on these planets besides just the upgrades that you acquire there's different creatures on there and you could scan them and learn more about these environments and learn more about the planets itself it's really a game where you can delve into this world and become really a part of it or you could just play the story and enjoy the story of the game so I like that you know it's it really encourages sort of exploration if you want to do that if you want to learn more or if you just want to actually play the game and play the missions you can do that too now as far as the controls are concerned of the game it definitely feels very smooth if you've ever played a Star Fox game you'll feel right at home except for one thing there is no lock on targeting and that could be a bit jarring when you first start playing the game I know when I first started playing I was kind of like where the hell is my lock on targeting I miss it but you quickly adjust to it and you know it's not really a big deal everything else feels fine you can jump when you're on these planets you can use a hyper boost uh, to get to different areas and stuff you can do tricks as you're traversing the area and of course you can do different things with your guns and things as as far as taking out these enemies it feels good it's definitely a little bit of a learning curve when there's no lock on targeting but I was able to adjust to it very easily and I didn't think it was that big of a deal graphically speaking I think the game looks pretty good there is some pop-up from time to time that is a bit noticeable but all the planets look really cool they all have their own sort of unique feel to them there's a lot of different creatures that you encounter
encounter, not necessarily ones that you're battling, but just ones that are available in the vi environment to scan and learn about them. And I really like that. It sort of gives another little layer of depth to the game. And I think the game, like I said, looks good overall. The dog fights look really good. Most of the enemies look really interesting and unique. And of course, Fox and his crew looks absolutely amazing. Another question I had about the Nintendo Switch version of the game was how is handheld mode going to be handled? Because when you're playing the game on your television and you have the physical version, you have to use the base and the different ships and things like that. But what's cool about it is they basically just incorporate everything that you've unlocked so far when you play in handheld mode. And you basically play a digital version of the stuff you've unlocked. So you don't lose anything when playing handheld mode. And that was a really big deal in my opinion because I thought that that could possibly be a bit problematic. And the game looks really good in handheld mode as well. It controls well still. And I think it looks really sharp and crisp. So I was pleasantly surprised with just how good handheld mode was on the Switch version of the game. Sound wise actually really impressed me with the game because there's so much voice acting in the game and it's all done really well except for that one vlogger guy. God, he gets on my nerves. But of course, Fox and his crew sound really good and there's lots of little intricacies that sort of give a nod to the Star Fox universe. When you're doing wolf-based missions, there's little Star Fox music that plays from time to time. And of course, uh, you have a special ability that you can call in the Star Fox crew when you're playing as Fox that is exclusive to the Nintendo Switch version of the game that plays that classic Star Fox theme song and then various members of your crew will come in and assist you on your mission. So that's actually really cool and you can upgrade how long they stick around and stuff like that. I was really impressed with the sound quality of the game. It's actually very good. The voice acting, like I said, is good and the music is pretty enjoyable as well. Now, as far as things I don't like about the game, I will say that I don't really like this sort of Toys to Life stuff. And like, you don't need it, but I would have liked to have checked out other weapons and it's unfortunate that you can't unlock them in the actual game itself. Like I said, there is some graphical pop-up from time to time. And of course, there is a six gigabyte day one download patch that you must incorporate into the game before playing the game. And things like that just really annoy me. There's a little bit of inconsistency in terms of leveling and battles and stuff like that. There was one point in time where I had to progress through the game. I had done all the main side missions, but I couldn't really progress because my character was too low and I was getting beat on this one section. So I had to do a bit of a grind, but the grind itself didn't feel that bad because all you do is just little littler missions on these different planets and stuff like that. So you do have to make sure that your level is kept up in your character in order to progress through the story. But all in all, I was absolutely blown away by this game because I went into it thinking that it would just be Star Fox thrown into this game and there would just be some basic Star Fox missions. But really, it feels like a different and new style of Star Fox game with an open world with elements of No Man's Sky, with elements of things like Mass Effect. And it really just blew me away just how good of a Star Fox game this is. Now, if Star Fox wasn't included, would I have enjoyed Starlink as much as I did? I honestly don't think so because I don't think the characters were really good enough for me to sort of get emotionally invested in them. But I do feel like that this game is marketed a bit towards a younger audience to begin with anyways. Obviously the Toys of Life stuff, most of that demographic is a younger audience. So I'm not really going to hold the game against that. But I could definitely say I would not have enjoyed this game as much without the Star Fox stuff. And that's not to say that it's a bad game. It's just that the Star Fox stuff adds so much stuff. Besides the main story, there's now wolf stuff. Besides the main characters, now you have Star Fox and his crew. And the fact that Star Fox games have been a bit mediocre for the past decade or so, it's really a great game for Star Fox fans. If you're a fan of games like No Man's Sky, if you're a fan of games like Star Fox, you're really going to like Starlink. The Nintendo Switch version, in my opinion, is the best version. I don't care what the PS4's graphics look like when it comes to this. This makes the Nintendo Switch version stand out, be special, and honestly, it should be rated higher than the other versions of the game because of how much more content you get when you incorporate Star Fox and the Star Fox team into this game. So phenomenal. I was really blown away with just how much fun I had with this game. There's definitely some nitpicks. It's definitely not a perfect game, but it's a super enjoyable game and one of the best Star Fox games that I've ever played. So if you're a fan of Star Fox, do not sleep on this game. Trust me, you are going to have a really good time with this game. So let me know in the comment section down below if you have checked out Starlink and if you have, what you think of the game. And as always, thank you for checking out this video. As always, be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for liking the video. And of course, if you're new to the channel, subscribe and turn on notifications. $100 eShop gift card giveaway is going on right now. You can pick up the digital version of this game that includes everything if you want to, if you win this contest. So I highly suggest you enter it. And as always, I will catch you guys on the next video. Later.